Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last video, I have mentioned Qi, the vital energy of the human body, according to traditional medicine. Today, we're going to talk about the Qi. Acupuncture stimulation elicits the Qi, a composite of unit sensations. The Qi is commonly translated as needle sensation, sometimes as arrival of Qi or needling response. According to traditional medicine, it originated from Neijing and is regarded as one of the most important principles and the key to successful acupuncture treatment because it is related to clinical efficacy. In this video, I'm going to discuss some information related to the Qi, including the characterization and influencing factors. First of all, characterization. The size of the Qi include the patient's subjective perception, the acupuncturist perception, and the objective physiological signs. Characterization of the Qi felt by the patients. Multiple sensations around the acupoints experienced by the patients are often described as sun, aging or soreness, ma, numbness or tingling, Chang, fullness, distension of pressure, and tung, heaviness. Besides, tung, which is pain, the experience occasionally has not been well characterized. Though pain is considered death the qi and beneficial to treatment, while shed pain is not the qi and harmful. Patients experience the qi very differently because of the conditions of the constitution or the therapist manipulation. The Qi sensation also appears to be different between manual and electrical stimulation, which I will mention later. Next is the characterization of the Qi found by the acupuncturist. Huang Ding Nei Jing, one of the four great glasses in traditional medicine, states that the Qi should be found by the acupuncturist, who also need to concentrate in order to hold it. The increased resistance a needle is felt by the acupuncturist as tense, tight, and full like a fish body onto a bait. This sensation is called needle grasping. Finally, objective physiological signs due to acupuncture treatment. Another important feature of the Qi is that it often spreads and radiates from the point of its elicitation which is called propagated sensation along meridians, or the flow of qi. Sometimes it may manifest like skin redness, gush flesh, or localized red, or white lines along the meridians of the body surface. Now, let's discuss some influencing factors of the qi. First of all, specificity of acupoints. A study was conducted to investigate the Qi intensity differences. Two groups were applied electroacupuncture on acupoints sharing the same meridian category and tissue structures but varying in nerve innervations. The results showed that there were significant differences of the Qi intensity among those acupoints. Therefore, nerve innervations of acupoints or peripheral nerve system have a significant influence on the qi. Although the qi is affected by nerve innervations, researchers found that there was no correlation between direct stimulation to nerves around the acupoints and obtaining the qi sensation. In an older cell imaging study, Researchers found that there was no association between the number of nerve contacts and the qi when applying acupuncture on Nei Guan. In some cases, the qi sensation had not been elicited even when the needle was inserted into the nerve. Similar studies found that the qi sensation was well achieved before the needle touched the median nerve under Nei Guan, which suggests that irritation of the nerve was not directly involved in generating it. Therefore, the qi should be a physiological phenomenon triggered by both the central and peripheral nerve systems rather than a simple reaction to direct stimulation. 
Another question may arise: whether the Qi sensation could be elicited at non-acute points or not. And the answer is yes. The Qi sensation could be elicited at both acute points and non-acute points, but the subsequent physiological responses are different. And the next influencing factor of the Qi is acupuncture manipulation. Many researchers prove that acupuncture manipulation had a significant impact on the Qi. Among many techniques, dilatation is the most commonly used for eliciting the Qi, because it can create needle grasping sensation much easier when compared to other techniques. This sensation is an important indicator of the Qi. Some researchers believe that the connective tissue is the foundation of grasping sensation. Their studies observed that needle rotation was accompanied by marked thickening of the connective tissue layer in the area surrounding the needle. Winding of tissue around the needle leads to the generation of a mechanical signal by pulling up collagen fibers and matrix deformation during rotation. Then the signal was transmitted into cells and caused a subsequent downstream effects. This may be the mechanism of meridian chi migratory. Besides, the depth of needling may also affect the chi sensation. An ultrasound garden study found that deep needling with bidirectional rotation have a marked effect in increasing both the chi sensation and pain which is better than that of superficial needling or deep needling without rotation. Therefore, the depth of needling and the rotation manipulation have a corroborated effect in generating the Qi sensation in curative effects. Now, we're moving on to methods of stimulation. Stimulation method is another factor that affects the Qi. Some studies compare the different subjective dirty sensations and physiological responses caused by manual acupuncture and electroacupuncture. The results show that the sensation of manual acupuncture on Hua Gu were mainly soreness and distension, while those of electroacupuncture were mainly tingling and numbness. This research also found that there were significant differences in fMRI signals in different brain regions between two methods. Therefore, different brain mechanisms may be involved by different methods of stimulation. And finally, psychological factors. Psychological factors of patients including belief in acupuncture, the level of nervousness, Anxiety and depression was assessed in many studies. The results show that psychological factors contributed little to De Qi, and the correlation between De Qi and therapeutic efficacy was greater than that between psychological factors and clinical efficacy. This means psychological factors might have a certain influence on De Qi, but it is not the decisive factor. In conclusion, the specificity of acupoints, needling manipulation, and methods of stimulation are key factors that affect the qi. Various psychological factors have comparatively less influence on it. That's all I want to say in this video. In the next one, I'm going to discuss the effects of the qi on acupuncture treatment. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.